I'm Ken Gross. I've been a Pebble Beach judge for 30 years, and I'm on the selection committee, and I was the person who uh, pulled these cars together, suggested a Hot Rod magazine cover class, and the challenge, of course, is trying to find cars that were on covers that we didn't have already, but we, none of these have ever appeared on the field, and I have to say this is an exciting moment that they're all here. The criteria was that the car had to be on the cover of a hot rodding magazine, not necessarily hot rod. So we have cars that were on hot rod magazine, rodding and restyling, car craft, hop up, uh, and even the program for the SCTA in, uh, for their dry lakes program. But the whole idea was had to be a cover car because guys who own hot rods love to have their car on the cover of a magazine. Well, at the far end, we have uh, reunited for the first time in over 50 years uh, Tommy Ivo's T and Norm Grabowski's Kooky Car. The Kooky Car was in the uh, television series 77 Sunset Strip. Every one of these is a star. I mean, uh, it, we have Ed Roth's Outlaw, which is from the Peterson Automotive Museum. And when Ed Roth built that car, it's a fiberglass stylized fantasy of a 27 Ford. And I know when it first came out, I thought it was very strange. It was on the cover of Carcraft. I didn't get it. I didn't get it that it was a, really a piece of art, a piece of rolling sculpture, and not so much a hot rod. But it really is a hot rod. It's got a, a Cadillac engine with four carburetors and uh, wire wheels like a dragster. So it's the real deal. We had hot rods for the first time in 1997, and either every other year or every second year, we've had hot rod, historic hot rod classes. So you're not going to get a, a, a modern car that was just built. All these cars were, were built, uh, were either built before 1970 or they're at 1932 Ford, so it doesn't matter when they were built. I love them all, but the orange car there um, belonged to a man named Phil Cool. I mean, if you're a hot rodder and your name is Phil Cool, how cool is that? So that car in 1978 won the America's Most Beautiful Roadster Award at the, in, the, in those days it was at the Oakland Roadster Show. And hot rods in that era and cars that won at, uh, at Oakland were starting to get spaceshipy and kind of weird. And that car came in with a uh, uh, fiberglass, like a Westcott uh, body, 32 Ford body with a 427 Chevy and a 671 blower and everybody said wait a minute that's what hot rods are all about we'd forgotten for a while but that's the car well uh, the whole idea of a hot rod was to take a <clears throat> an affordable old car strip it down to get the weight down and put the biggest most powerful engine you could uh, in it uh, hot rod, no one knows where the name came from. Uh, we think it's a contraction of hot roadster because roadsters are what uh, most hot rodders uh, ran. Uh, you know, the, long before drag racing, hot rodders went to El Mirage and the other dry lakes around Los Angeles and ultimately to Bonneville and they were interested in top speed. Uh, the quarter mile idea came along a few years later when not everybody could go to the lakes and uh, could afford it to, uh, to, to do so, but guys were street racing. You know, they were, they were going from stoplight to stoplight. So someone, maybe Wally Parks, had the idea, uh, let's just do a quarter mile. And we can set these strips up on air, airports so we can build them all around the country. And uh, that's where drag racing was born. People in, at first were not thrilled about the notion of deuces with Delages and Duesenbergs and Delahays. But uh, they've, they've totally become accepted. And uh, I, I think that people will be pleasantly surprised. Uh, we're back.